This is the village of Market Lavington on Salisbury Plain. Blockbusters dropped by the RAF on nearby West Down Range the week before gave the village the scare of its life and brought protest from local MPs. So our reporter went down to see how the latest exercise went off. Mrs. Maslin, tell me what happened when the big bomb fell. Well, uh, it was terrible. I rushed upstairs to see that the windows were open, as I was pretty sure they were. But uh, this big crash came and I simply flew out the bedroom door. You were very frightened? <laughs> I was, yes. What actually happened in the house? Well, the ceiling came down as I was in the room. The ceiling came down? Yes, and I rushed in for Father, and I think I'd better leave him to finish Well, here's story. Father now. <laughs> well, Dad, what's your story? What do you think about this bombing? Well, I think it fairly upset the whole village, and everyone would uh, wonder what wouldn't happen next. Market Lavington's 904 villagers hope they've had their last Big Bang. Well, Charlie, how does all this bombing affect your life? Oh, well, these 5,000 pounds were a bit of a bump, but still, that didn't worry us at all. In Paris, British middleweight champion Vince Hawkins of Eastleigh battles it out with France's Gustave de Gaulle. Hawkins was pinned onto the ropes in the third round. De Gaulle, with white waistband, hits out with hooks to the body. Prior to the Paris fight, Hawkins was due to box Marcel Serdin for the European Championship. On his showing against the Gouve, Hawkins doesn't seem to be ready for that yet. <laughs> Hawkins manages to duck one of the Frenchman's blows. Although the Eastley boxer tried hard in the last two rounds, de Gouve, France's number two middleweight, proved far superior. He gained a clear points victory. This defeat has cost Vince Hawkins a crack at the European title. The City of London welcomes the royal family at their first public ceremony since they return. The state landau makes its way to Guildhall, where the king and queen and the princesses were the guests of the Lord Mayor. At Temple Bar, a purple cord is drawn across the road to remind all who approach of the city's rights and privileges. Lord Mayor Sir Bracewell Smith offered the symbolic sword to the king and gave him formal permission to enter the city. This ancient custom dates back to the time of Magna Carta, when King John granted the citizens of London their liberties and free customs. The king was suffering from laryngitis, but in the longest public speech he has ever made, he spoke of his impressions of the royal tour. Declaring his faith in the people of Britain, the king said, come what may, this old country is at heart as young and vigorous as she has ever been. <laughs>